Good day, today I'll be talking about instruction pipelines in the CPU. So instruction pipelines is actually an important thing to know, and uh, you'll see why it's actually super important. I'll also go over some components like CPUs that do actually use these, some not. But let me show you all the, of these instruction pipelines. So let's pick. First of all, let me show you the, all of these instruction pipelines. So there are actually five of them because one of them is not really necessary, but may be useful. Uh, normally there's four instruction pipelines. Most of CPUs do have four instruction pipelines. Although you can add even more like nine, whatever. Um, for example, the famous CHU NGUS2 CPU made by Semi Uri has four uh, instruction pipelines, which is fetch, decode, execute, and write back. Uh, MPU8 by, uh, um, I don't remember who it is, Mod Punch Tree, actually, it's another very powerful CPU. That one has nine instruction pipelines, so basically a lot more but still um it is super fast but we're not talking about cpus we're talking about instruction pipelines so let's go over these first of all we can see a bunch of components so we have a 64 byte program memory so that's our program memory we have a control unit we have ram we have io ports uh we have registers which are going to actual label so let me let me put a registers here There we go, beautiful. So just eight uh, bytes of registers, and then we also have 64 bytes of RAM. Then yeah, that's pretty much the entire CPU. Now let's talk about instruction pipelines. So fetch is where you obtain uh, whatever is in the program memory, and then cache it before sending it into the control unit. So that's because I'll actually show you why. So let me show you why uh, fetch is actually really useful. So here, this is a, a little cut piece of CPU, I can say. And you can see this is our uh, fetch decode instruction pipeline. And I mean, it is currently off, I disable it, so I just remove the torch. Um, and as you can see, we're reading from this line right now. See, I actually put a parallel shifter, because why not? I just made everything simplified. So right now it's currently reading from this so if i go ahead and put like i don't know you can see what i want to have like five when i send four it already sends into the cpu and the cpu will already execute the instruction which i didn't want to let i mean let me type five until uh, before i actually uh, want to execute the instruction so if i do five finally it is rst but it already executed pld instruction while i was typing so let's go ahead and add fetch and decode instruction pipeline. So it's just by putting this torch in. It adds fetch decode instruction pipeline. Actually, fetch instruction pipeline. Why do I say decode so many times? I cannot believe this. Anyway, so now you can see when I go ahead and type 5, you can see it's a locked up here. So it's not sending. And when I go ahead and do this, you can see I, I put 5 already, so it's not sending anything yet. As you can see, the control unit still doesn't, isn't receiving anything. Until I go ahead and push this button, which is basically a clock here, I can see. You can see if, uh, this, these repeaters were um, updated. So now, they were basically uh, locked and then unlocked. Actually, unlocked and then locked. And only after this point, everything got sent into the control unit. And as you can see, just at the perfect time, RST lines up. So we're not uh, executing any other instruction or typing until I push the button. Uh, it instantly goes to from NOP to RST instruction. RST is used to store to registers. So yeah, that's pretty much instruction pipeline. That's why it's useful. So um, I wish uh, this information was useful. But let me see one more thing. Well, just give me a second. So this right here is a CPU SRGP graphics processor. Yes, it was entirely built by me. Uh, it is still work in progress due to registers. I actually removed them and I'm gonna make them. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just super lazy. So let me show you about the instruction pipelines. So you can see what is happening here. This orange part is our program memory, and this is our, I think it's immediate. So it's actually main busing. So when I go ahead and type something, it actually starts from there to here, then to the next, and 
for their there. So if I go ahead and type like five, it will already get sent into the control unit. So uh, basically at this point. Uh, if we don't want to have any issues like that. So that's why there's this part right here, which is basically, well, it's fetch the uh, destruction pipeline. And only when the clock gets uh, executed, it will flash this, and it will get sent into the control unit just at the perfect time, but it will also get sent into the output of the alien UI. I know it only executes when the destruction LDI gets executed. So actually really powerful uh, GPU is actually SISD I'm still working on. So as you can see, this is literally a clock. I right? just said part further back. If I go to the if I go ahead and follow this line, you can see how it comes. Oops. So it comes from this part. So this is right here is a clock. It goes all the way across from about here. Yeah, so this right here, this part is a clock. And when it gets executed, it goes into there. It increments the program counter by one, and it also flashes this repeater lock, so it sort of fetch the you know, instruction. Uh, I I actually don't, didn't want my CPU to be pipeline, so I only have one instruction pipeline just fetch. Um, but still, sometimes instruction pipelines are actually useful. Uh, they're actually useful in a lot of ways, like synchronizing, perfect timing sending, uh, all of that stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much the instruction pipeline. I hope you learned something. And uh, yeah, don't forget to smash that like button and punch that subscribe button. It will mean me the entire world. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.